All right, good morning. We're here with Kelsey Wishick, um, who is in our current exhibit, um, Elements, Expressions in Wood, Metal, and Stone. And we're here in her studio. She's gonna give us a nice virtual studio tour, um, show us some things she's working on, um, and tell us a little bit about her background in the arts, what brought her to, um, she's currently an MFA student at Lamar Dodd at the University of Georgia. So we'll hear about what brought her here and uh, what she's working on. So thank you, Kelsey, for being with us this morning. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to Athens um, and you know what brought you to this program? Yeah, so I, um, I'm from Mississippi originally, and I did my undergraduate there in sculpture. Um, I took a bit of a break there uh, in between after I graduated to kind of travel and gain inspiration from the world and just working in the world as a creative individual. Um, and then I kind of got to the point where I wanted to dive more deeply into my art practice again. I was ready to just really focus on developing work specifically with metal focusing on that. Um, but I, I, funnily enough, I'm very passionate about the idea of elemental work. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought this show was very fitting. Um, so I do incorporate found wood, clay a lot into my work. And um, Athens, I uh, actually had a friend in this program before um, who, who was making a lot of really thoughtful work. And I came to visit the studios really connected with the city, um, specifically the natural environment in the city. That's something I'm very passionate about is being out in nature, by the river, hiking. Um, I'm out every single day. So um, really I chose this um, area for the natural beauty, the location and the program and what it offered as far as studio capacity and a creative community. So I'll, that was another reason I chose to come here was to to engage a creative community and yeah. um, the possibility for collaboration both within the graduate school and, and the city itself. Nice. Nice. So tell us a little bit about some of the things that you're working on here. Um, a lot of amazing things. Get some. Uh, this piece right here is kind of similar to one of the pieces that you have in the show. Mm -hmm. um, this tell piece is actually. Uh, part of my undergraduate work, it was uh, a thesis, part of my thesis for my undergraduate, and those pieces that are very enclosed and kind of spherical really drew from the idea of almost like a seed, mm -hmm. a seed-like form, um, and not just a seed that's in the ground, but just kind of the idea of how energy um, is contained at a center point, point. Yeah. and that's anything from a seed to the human heart. Uh, or the earth itself, which is very gravitationally condensed, but has an energy field around it. So I was really kind of stylizing and working with that idea. Yeah. And as I've been here, this isn't the only field of thought that I'm working with, but the things have kind of started to break apart. So it's more about the action of blooming and mm. expanding and moving outward um, and that growth that happens that is starting to come into the work. And some of that work is also, the newer work is featured in the show Elements. Yeah. Um, that draws from the idea of blooming in natural systems, anything from mycology or, or fungal systems to just plants, foliage, and then some of the works you can see maybe more macrocosmic vibes where it's like galaxies and how those start to um, expand outward, even in these very large celestial bodies. So those are this kind of symbol, symbolic imagery that I'm that I'm drawing from, yes. and I'm doing that in in metal that's starting to become more colorful. And also my paintings, I feel like really really are focusing on that. Um, in in regards to that, I do draw from actualities, natural systems, things that occur in nature, but. I very much employ like a surrealistic, intuitive um, stream of consciousness approach to all of that. So I just kind of let it flow. And what I'm actually looking at in the world comes out in this kind of intuitive and often abstracted way. Um, so those things meet in the middle somewhere. 
Nice. Now, you have some of these um, pieces um, behind you, and then some, let me just take us over here on the wall. These are kind of um, connected to some of the works that you have at the museum right now, um, part of a, a series. Um, and now I see that you're, you know, some of them are in color. Um, so there's kind of a, an evolution there. Um, I do, I do love the colors. So the, the pieces, the two dimensional pieces you have over there, are they companion pieces to the three dimensional pieces? I think, I think I would say so. I mean, they don't necessarily need to be side yeah. by side in right. a showing or something like that. Yeah. But they immediately are related because I'm using actually some of this, the um, steel pieces that I'm cutting out as stencils for the paint. Yeah. So I do a lot of different layers first, like a very emotive, um, how I'm feeling sort of color layer with the paintings. And then I'll actually use like a lot of these steel shapes as a way, I'll just lay them directly on top of the painting and sort of move them around as I'm painting around them. And so they become a bit layered and embedded in, in the work. I was going to say they almost seem like studies in a way. They, do, they are, they are. And everything I would... If I'm honest, I would probably consider almost everything that I do a study. Nice. Um, but they are related. I do love the natural tones of metal. I think it's very magnetic, um, and it, it has the feeling of being conductive of energy. But at some point, working with the idea and the concept of blooming and actually looking out into the world, I, you, you see infinite color. The ornamentation of life from like a beetle to a flower to the way people present themselves. It's all so colorful and patternistic. And there's um, this incredible ornamentation that happens in nature through color as well. Uh, and that's something I'm just now really beginning. And what you see here is really the first layers. Um, I definitely do consider time in my work. So this is just like the first layer in the passing of my hand. I intend to I actually have a few pieces outside right now getting rained on, so I'm seeing how the rust will kind of overcome some of this artificial color and have a nice um, blend of, of both of those things. So it's in an experimental phase. Nice. Nice. So you work with a lot of, you said, found materials and, and things like that. Talk, maybe talk a little bit about how you, how you source materials and just how you evaluate what you'll use and just go through that process. That is very significant to me, especially at this time in the world where there's just such a, um, a buildup of excess and waste um, and, and hazardous toxic materials. So I really do like to use more um, natural material when it comes to wood. Um, here you can see on this piece on the wall is actually recycled steel. This one here, it's called Anamaya, which actually means like physical body or, or yeah, material body. So it's drawing from like natural grasses in the area that are often burned to be, um, to allow for new growth. So I only drew from materials that I knew, I'm not taking from the environment something that it needs. And also getting closer to the environment, um, seasonally learning how it behaves in different seasons. Um, and I've woven it through um, the recycled steel armature. I love steel for a, a number of reasons. I could talk about metal all day, <laughs> but um, I do love that it, it's very, it's cheap, but also it, it can be repurposed. I can take, you know, parts from an old piece that maybe I've kind of grown past and use it again. And it, it's very um, adaptable in that way. It's also very structural. So even while I'm learning abstraction and um, kind of having my personal um, relationship with the work. I, I'm also learning how to build structures um, and to build internal structures. So I really see myself moving forward um, and finding the balance between form and function. I'm very passionate about um, environmental advocacy, so I'm looking into a future of green structures, um, pieces that work with both the environment and the cityscape. Um, and I'm, I was actually just doing some research this morning about how to make floating sculptures that actually oh, wow. purify water bodies. Oh, wow. Um, by having 
natural like plants and algaes embedded into them so that they can attach and, and work together. So I'm stylizing this now in my work. These, this idea of natural systems is very much an aesthetic, but it's I, by working through that aesthetic, I'm, I'm starting to plan into the future of how I can make it more functional in service to that. And then in a, pra in a very practical way, I, I source materials largely on walks. I walk around and yeah. I see things that, um, yeah. if it's game, <laughs> if it can be recycled and it's not anybody's, uh, I might, you might find me taking it from a dumpster or side of the road <laughs> or um, sticks in the woods if they're not a part. I've learned to identify actually animal habitats um, and things that animals use as um, kind of refuges. I don't use that, I don't touch that, so I've kind of learned what I can take and what I shouldn't take. Nice. Yeah. We talked um, earlier about your interest in um, public art and you just mentioned some more um, functional uh, evolution for your art so it's um, obviously that's something that you're interested in talk talk a little more about that yeah so I think I don't I remember when in my life I kind of started thinking about um, not just art but life in this way so there's the imper the personal investment that which fulfills me and satisfies me and um, contributes to my personal growth and then there's, I feel like it is a necessity to offer service and contribution. We all do it in some way or another, and I think artists do it as well. So having that element of public service um, is important for several reasons. I think public art specifically, it, it can be really inspirational in a way that maybe going to a gallery can't because you're in your own environment, you're in your own thoughts on your way through life. Um, and it, it really provokes this sort of thoughtfulness that um, I, I find really inspiring myself. Also having color and um, vibrant uh, content out into the world that's accessible to all walks of life, I think is really, really important. So um, I do have a mural practice. It's not taking up uh, most of my time right now, but I try to do at least one a year um, and put Put sculpture in public places as well so yeah. it can be accessed by many minds. I want to get a shot of this gorgeous mural that you've done in your studio space here. Yeah, it's a, just a way to evoke an uplifted attitude, I think, having color and something to look at as we move through life. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the idea of, of democratizing art for, you know, for everyone right. to enjoy. Yeah, so people who may not go to art school or know right. where the gallery is or have right. time to go to an art museum, um, it's a way that it, it is in our immediate experience of life we can engage something thoughtfully. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kelsey, for sharing that with us this morning. And, um, we might be back in just a little bit, but just a moment.